So let's do it this way. This time I will ask you questions, and you also ask me questions. Okay. Don't worry. Sir is around to help us understand. So you can ask whether in Tagalog or whether in any language, except Greek and Hebrew. Can you speak Greek? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you are my hero. Okay, I know you are kidding, I should <clears throat> Okay. So now, what do you remember? First, let me begin from what do you remember from what we said in the morning? Uh, what do you remember from our devotion discussion or study in the morning?
both worshiping God. Uh, do you, if you, yeah. <laughs> you are there. I am. I think we answer devoted to to God. Okay. Can you complete? Is the boat uh, worshiping God and? Okay. Devotional life is about worshiping God and not any other thing. Is a work that we have with God, not the work that we walk to Him. We were explaining in the morning that people make a journey to God, right? And God is far from our reach. So imagine you are traveling to God. It's a serious journey. And it's very hard to make it in the end. But if we understand that it's a work with God, a relation. It is very easy. Right now, I am reading about Enoch from Mrs. White in a book, Last Day Events. And the chapter is five. The topic says devotional life of God's people, the remnant people. Can you guess how many years Enoch worked with God? Three hundred. Almost dead. Three hundred and something. Beautiful. Three hundred and fifty. He walk with God. Imagine if you always go to God and come back. Will it be interesting? I think after 1,000 times, no, yes, after 100 times, you'll be tired. Why do I have to always go back and forth? Go back, on, off like that. It's not easy. But he understood that I have a relationship with God. That is all what devotional life is about. Having a relationship with what? Not my... I know. Huh? Most of us are like that. Sometimes people will be talking to us and we are busy. You know, my friend will always tell me, I know the end of the conversation, so let me cut it. Why did she say that? Because she thinks I'm paying attention to what I'm doing and I'm not listening to her. People can be voted to so many things. For Enoch, it was with God. Let's hear something that he used to do. He was always teaching his mind to acknowledge God's presence wherever he is. He was committed to a relationship where God is the center and everything that he does needs to bring blessings to this relationship. This is what it means to have a devotional life. In the morning we serve, it is not like the fire service time. You are only on duty when you are hungry. Lord, I'm hungry, so can you just bring some money? Mom, I don't have money. Can you give me money? We only go to God when there is a problem. Yet, we want to get good grades, right? We want to be the number one, the top notches in our schools. It's impossible. With such a life, 
like my devotional life is on, off, only midweek, only vespers, and sometimes even when we go, we only sit in the bar. And you know, it's fun to enjoy Facebook in church, right? Yes, because the message is not interesting. This is not devotional life. It means we love Facebook more than God. And a lot of times we talk with our friends that even our lolas and our lolas will hey, hey, hey. Meaning, be quiet, listen to the sermon, or the preacher is talking, or sharing a message. If we have lifestyle like this, we don't go anywhere. We don't grow very well. I was saying it, I think, in the third section, or maybe in some of the sessions in the morning. Some of us want to become Miss Universe. Last year, a Filipina was runner up, right? This year is Filipina. And this is not the only time. I heard. Before, I also met another Seventh-day Adventist in AUP who also was a winner of one of the events. I think Miss Earl. Very beautiful lady. Very beautiful. That day, he came to the church with also an Adventist actor. What's the name of that man? Yes. Wait, I'll ask Sir Pasamba when he comes. In, in, in AMP, PIC. Uh, Cesar Montano. Cesar Montano. He is a Seventh day Adventist. And you know what he does? We were asking, they were asking him questions. How do you balance your busy work with? All these cameras and fanfare, hey, autograph and everything. How do you balance your life with all these activities? He said, I still spend time with God in prayer and in the study of God's Word. How did he get them? It is something he said. Mama was always telling me, Anak, come here and let's study God's word together. This is what shaped him to the top. I heard Ate asking Adventist Kata. Yes, he is. Miss Earth, that I don't remember her name very well, also an Adventist. The question is, how did these two people rise to the top? In the morning session, we were talking about their devotion with God. It was not on and off. They were committed all their lives to God and with God. If we want to go to that top, God is the giver and the maker of all these beautiful things. He can give all of them to us if only we are connected with Him. You know, I was asking about how do we get this light? This love, where does it come from? Say, from the electricity, from which company? Mirago. Okay. It comes from Mirago. If we get this connected from Mirago, do we have light? We don't. It's the same thing with God. If we want His blessings, but are not connected with Him, or through his provision, we'll never have anything. So devotional life 
It's our relationship with God. How can we do it? Now I want to hear something also from you. Arthur, how can we have a fruitful and good relationship, a Maganda relationship with God? Uh huh. Tagalog. You forgot Tagalog? How can you have a good devotion in it? Yes. Uh, it's just here, the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Do I look scary? Yes, I know my face looks scary. Don't worry about my face. Okay. How can we see God? Atem? You can speak in Tagalog, Nicolano, it's okay. Okay, how many of us have Bibles? How many of us have Bibles? Do you have a Bible? Okay. How about you? Do you have? Very good. So I believe all of us have Bibles, right? Whether it's soft copy or hard copy, it's still Bible. We can seek God through the study of the Word. Do you know what it does? When you read the Bible, do you know what it does? It expands your brain. It expands your brain. I did not know it until I studied to find out. Before, if you like me, if you ask me what subject I hate, it begins with M A T H. What is that? Math. Math. I hate it. Very, very poor. In fact, very extreme, very, very poor. I hated that. My elder brother told me, before you begin doing your assignments, pray to God. Ask him to help you understand. Guess what my highest score was? Ten. 10 was my highest score. And it did not come from my own effort. It was a gift from the teacher. It means I scored this. Zero. But the teacher was too merciful to give me 10. When I started applying the method of my elder queer, pray to God for help. The next exam, I scored my own 40. From 0 to 40. 40. 4-0. 40. Over. Over 100. It was a huge achievement for me. Because from 0, now I can get 40. And I started improving. I started improving. Sometimes I'll read a verse from the Bible and I try to memorize. When I started to commit memory verses here, my brain was growing stronger and stronger. That is how, dear brothers and dear sisters, I became a bright student. If we will seek God, commit our favorite, if it is John 3 16, don't worry how many times you recite it. If it is John 10 30, as we read in the morning, I and my Father are one. Continue to commit it to memory. If it is Jesus' word, continue to repeat it. If it is Proverbs 5 6. Is that the right one? Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 6. Chapter 3. What is that? We are doing Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord way. And, and in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. If this is your favorite, continue to recite it. Just say a short prayer, and day by day, it helps your mind to expand. This is a miracle. Your brain will not grow bigger to pop your head up, 
but the neurons in your brain increases your chances of keeping things here. It happens through the study of God's word. Every person who has a devotional life commits test to his or her memory. That is what he now did. Also, your favorite AY songs. Keep singing them. It also expands your memory. This is how we develop a devotional life. It means we have a relationship with God to respect Him. Do you like playing games? Computer games, video games. You know, my first time I went to Bulacan, we went to this PC. PC there? PC there. Oh my goodness. I was amazed. The kid can press the button. And ah, oh my gosh. <laughs> Game over, he loves also. Okay, then he will check. Bring out five pesos, go and pay again, he will come because he wants to defeat that guy. Yes. And he will try again and he will lose. He checked here, no more coins, no more coins. He just went up very sad. <laughs> Friends, video games will kill our brains. Television will kill our brains. You know what you do after you watch? You try to act like them. If it is Mendoza, that is your favorite actor or actress, you always want to dress like her. I know some people that want to be like Hannah Montana. Are you watching this Hannah Montana series? Yes. We want to dress like her. So, this is what we do. This is divorcing to Miley Cyrus and not to God. I think I said it in your session this morning. One pastor said, if you spend all the time on this giant thing that goes on television, watch all the crazy stuff, listen to all the crazy music, God will never be your friend. How and why? Whenever you hear his word, ah, oh, man, then they go again. Always. Praise to the Lord. That's boring. Can we sing something? My Jesus, my Savior. Tower of prayer. Can we dance a little? It's happening in my country. It's happening among my community. That is why I'm saying it. It gets to a time people get fed up. Why? Because they want something new. God never changes. It happens because we don't spend time with Him. That is why. So my dear brothers and sisters, a devotional life is not something that it's on and off. It is always. And I'm happy with after guessing how many years that Enoch walked with God. 350 days. How can we say this in Tagalog? That long, the long put. Wow, 350 days. 
a relationship with God. And God saw the heart, blessed him, and said, Life on earth is too much. Son, come to heaven. Let's have it here. And I was telling people, I think in the second session, do you think God is boring? Never. The Garden of Eden is a place where pleasure and excitement was happening. 3D effects. Adam and Eve went to one fruit and they were looking at it like, wow! Why? Because they were amazed. I was listening to a sermon about the bee. The bee can just turn 45 times and you know what it means? It tells the other bee that there is food in this direction so the bee should go there. When I listened or when I heard it for the first time, I was super duper amazed. God is amazing. Do you know the hummingbirds? There is a kind of bird that will come with a beak and they will be always flapping their wings in front of a flower. Do you know what it means? What he does that he is sipping or sucking the nectar into the body I cannot explain everything because these are scientific findings. And it talks about the power of God. When I was listening to them, I was blown away. This is who God is. Friends, when we spend time with Him, we find all this beautiful knowledge. We share with people and they come to love God. But if we sit in front of GMA 24-7, and watch this young girl. What's the name of that young girl? Raisa. If we watch her all the time, I'm not saying don't watch her. But if we watch 24-7 a day, we will always be dancing like Raisa. Please, let's spend time with God and all these things around us won't make sense to us. We are judging. If you like the video game, yes, I'm not saying don't play them. But don't play it more than your assignments. Don't read it more than your Bible. Don't sing it more than your hymnals. Ellen White did this. David did it. Jesus did it at the age of 12 years, and God blessed all of them. This is devotional life. Any question? Any question? Do you have any question to ask about anything about life? You no, know, because we want to get out of this place. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Thank you very much. Devotional life is our relationship with God. It's all the time. Not certain times. Other times. When life is good, that's when no God. And it's like God oh, is so good because today is good. God is so good. God is so good, is so good to me. God is good all the time, so let's maintain a good relationship with Him. I had G I G O. Good things in, good things out. So B I B O. Bad things in, bad things out. Let's take good things in, and everybody will be happy. I will ask my student. I always ask. Student, do you like your teachers? Do you like your teachers? Yes. When they say no, I ask why. They talk too much. 
No, they don't talk too much. It's because you are not good in their class. That's why you don't like them. They always give assignments. Yes. Why do they give assignments? Because they want you to study to be the number one. They say, say they are good people. They like our best. You know, when Caesar Montana, what's the name? Caesar Montana. Caesar Montana came to our school in AUP. I met one man, and he said, Brother, Elder Lord Halte, his wife was the kindergarten teacher of this man. Guess who is the proudest person? That woman. She couldn't believe it that someone that she taught from preschool is now a famous star in the country. That is what our parents, that is what our teachers, that is what our church leaders want in us and they want to see. If we have a good relationship with God, Matthew 6, 33, all these things will be given unto us. God bless you. Amen? Amen. We will stand and we will pray. Do you have any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? It can be for your friends, it can be for your family, it can be for your parents, it can be for your school life. Any? None. Okay, let's pray. You have? For PYC, right? Beautiful. Okay. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. In here, right? That's most of us are in here. Okay. Any other prayer request? Okay. Let's pray. Let's hold hands. Let's hold hands. Yes. Okay. Let's pray. Almighty Father in heaven, dear Father, we thank you very much for this circle of friendship that we have with you and with one another. Father, we love you so much. That's why we are here in UIC. To learn something new and to learn something about you that will help us to do well as good people. I commit all of us as young ones into your hands. Father, bless us in everything that we do. Dear Father, you observe that we are sorry because we think we will make mistakes and friends sometimes will make fun of us. But in the Bible we learn that you have not given us the spirit of fear. In the Bible we learn that you have given us power to believe that with you we can do all things. So dear Father, may we have the confidence to speak to share and also to ask. Not only here, but in the school also, and wherever we find ourselves. This confidence, Father, will help us also to tell your love to others. We thank you very much for blessing us with this opportunity here in PYC. Not everyone got this privilege. So, Father, help us to learn good things so that we can be good people. Bless EYC, those that are still on their way coming, Father, bless them and bring them here safe and sound. And Father, as everything will be over and we will go back, lead us home safely without any problem. Help us also, Father, to share what we learn and the beautiful things that we have discovered. Bless all these young people in their steady life, in their families, and also in their barangays. Bless their families, 
Bless this country, Philippines, and make all of us good people in the coming year. This is our humble prayer. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. See you again next time. This free.